this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 3, part of this playlist that I'm calling Continuous Random Variables. And let's jump to today's topic, which is the Weibull distribution. Now, the Weibull distribution is used extensively in reliability applications to model failure times. There are several different parameterizations of this density, and you must be aware of which one you are using. And the reason I say that, the parameterization that we're going to cover is actually a little bit different than the parameterization that the R software uses. Now, the Weibull, let X be a Weibull distribute random variable with parameters alpha and beta. Then the density for X is given by this expression, alpha, beta, X to the beta minus 1, e to the alpha X beta. X is greater than or equal to 0. Now let x be a Weibull random variable with parameters alpha and beta, then the mean of x is given by this expression. Let's prove it. So the expected value of x is you take x times the density integrated over all possible values, which is 0 to infinity. A u substitution of alpha x to the beta, which is essentially this exponent here, then du is equal to alpha beta x to the beta minus 1 dx. And then so everything out front in that dx is now du. So that comes down here. The u transfers. But this lone x, we have to back solve for x and then plug it in there so we get a variable of u. Now the alpha is not part of the u world, so we can bring it out front. And that's what this expression is. Then what's left over looks kind of like a gamma distribution. So if the beta and the gamma distribution would be 1 in this case, and if we say plus 1, minus 1, then the alpha expression in the gamma distribution is 1 over beta plus 1. So if we divide by the right constant and then multiply, you know, multiply by a well-chosen 1 essentially, this piece on the right will integrate to 1 because it, it's integrating over the, the gamma density. And then the constants left out front is this expression here. And that's what we wanted to show that the mean was. Now to calculate the variance of x, we it's easier to calculate the second moment of x. So let x be a Weibull random variable with parameters alpha and beta. Then the second moment of x is given by this expression. And we're going to do something very similar we did with the mean. The expected value of x squared is you take x squared times its density, integrated over all possible values. Then we do a u substitution, which the exponent here, it's the same u substitution we did before. Then du is this. And everything gets... Uh, substituted in but for the x we have to back solve for x in this expression and we get u over alpha raised to the 2 divided by beta the alpha can come out front and then the, again this looks like a, a gamma distribution if we had the right normalizing constant so we divide and multiply so it's a well chosen one but then the density integrates to one and then the constant that we multiplied out front was this. Well, that's what we wanted to show is the second moment of a Weibull distribution. So then the variance becomes, you know, we just plug in those two things that we uh, just calculated. Let X be a Weibull random variable with parameters alpha and beta. The variance of X is given by this expression. And to prove it, the variance of X is equal to the expect value of X squared minus the mean quantity squared. So you just plug in the values that we, uh, you know, we just derived. You can square that and then factor it out of that expression. And this is it. And so this is the variance of the Weibull distribution. Now, a couple common functions that were, or, you know, that are used in reliability analysis or survival analysis are the reliability function and the hazard rate. Now we're going to just briefly introduce them and when I eventually get to my playlist on uh, survival analysis we'll go into much 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 more detail. 
So the reliability function, let x denote the time to failure on an object or a system, you know, let x be, you know, in zero to infinity. The failure density, for example, Weibull distribution, can model the time to failure. Then the reliability function is the probability that the object or system will not fail before time t. So let's assume f is a Weibull distribution, then the reliability function is r of t is equal to this expression, e raised to the minus alpha t raised to the beta. And let's prove it. So r of t is the probability that we're greater than t. Now since x is a continuous random variable, we could technically put an equal sign there and it's, it doesn't change it. But traditionally, you say x greater than t. So we integrate the density from t to infinity. So we plug in the density, do the standard variable change where we look at that exponent, and we get du is equal to this expression, substitute everything in, take the antiderivative, and then we evaluate it at these two numbers here, and uh, in, plug in infinity, it goes to zero, and then, and then minus a minus becomes a plus, plug in alpha t to the beta, and you get this expression, which is what we wanted to show. That's the reliability, the probability that we're at least, you know, that we survive more than t. Now, the hazard rate function, um, the hazard rate function, h of t is defined on a time interval, um, t to some delta, you know, t plus delta. Now, one thing to remember, a rate in mathematics is the ratio of two numbers, but the, but those numbers have different units, and then that's that's a rate in mathematics. So, for example, when we calculate speed, it's miles per hour, right? We have two numbers, but we have different units. Or, for example, your heart rate is discovered is calculated in beats per minute. So the we have just two numbers, but those numbers have different rate, different units. And so that's a rate in mathematics. And so here, so H of T provides the instantaneous failure rate of time, given that an object has survived just prior to that time. Okay, so we're going to um, calculate a probability over a time interval. Okay, so to interpretate H of T, and we'll, I'll make that more explicit in a second. So the interpretation of the hazard rate, if H is increasing over an interval, then failure is more likely. If H is decreasing over an interval, then failure is less likely. If H, you know, the hazard rate function is steady and over an interval, then failure is due mainly to random effects. So assume H is a Weibull distribution, then the hazard rate function, H of T is defined as this. And, and this is it. This, is, this measures what we call the instantaneous rate of failure at time T, given that the object has survived you know, just prior to T. And let's prove that. So the proof is this. Now, we, we can't really talk about points because probabilities of points is zero in a continuous distribution. And so we have to talk about some sort of, you know, delta, you know, some sort of region or interval for it to make sense. But then we can let that region or delta go to zero. And then we can, that gives us a limiting distribution of that. So the hazard rate is defined as this. It's the probability that x is between t and t plus delta, so it's within some interval, right? Can't be a point, has to be some interval, but it's we're, it's given that we've uh, lived to time t or more. And then we're dividing by delta t. So that's the, you know, the ratio of two numbers. So this is a probability divided by time. And so that's the rate that we're looking at, the hazard rate. But now let's let that interval go to zero. And that will give us that instantaneous rate. 
So this conditional probability is written as a, you know, it, it can be transformed into a conditional probability so that the back piece, the conditional part is divided by here. So probably the T is greater than T. And then this, the top is the intersection. So X greater than T and X greater than T, but less than T plus Delta. Well, that's just this. Um, here, the probability that, that x is greater than or equal to t, that's the reliability function. So let's move it out and move the delta under it. But this is actually just the definition of a derivative. And if you take the derivative of a CDF function, you get the density function. And, and actually, that's what we wanted to show, that this is the, the value that we're looking for. OK, well, that's all I have. I'm at, I'm at 10 minutes. I need to stop. Uh, the next video will be on variable transformations. And so I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.